Hi, I'm Alex Hound, and I'm here with Sam Anderson from Nutrition Team at the clinic. And today we're going to be talking about a certain area of the immune system in any chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, and really that group of illnesses. Um, so, Sam, maybe as a starting point, I know some people have heard the term immune system skew. Yeah. What's actually meant by that? Okay, well, this is going to be a fairly simplified version of it because the immune system it's it's one of the most complex areas of human health and I think you know right at the highest level of researchers and scientists we're still learning about it but that's the exciting part as well we are learning new things about it all the time so when we talk about immune system skew if you think about um, one way your immune system is working is through something called T helper cells and in the beginning you have what's called immature T helper cells right at the top and then those T helper cells can develop either into T helper cells 1 type or T helper cell type 2 so TH1 or TH2 now TH1 tends to be what's called intracellular immunity so it means sort of challenges pathogens that are inside the cells and TH1 activation tends to be mostly linked to kind of act immune, immune system response to, for example, cold, cold viruses or bacteria. You've got your TH2, which is called extracellular. So now you're dealing with sort of parasites, toxins, something that are in the body, usually between the cells. What has been now shown and what it it's looking like in conditions like CFS, um, ME, fibromyalgia, what can happen sometimes to immune system is the TH2 side gets overactivated. And what that means first of all is that the TH1, the usual, your usual kind of immune system, how you would normally mostly see your immune system work is, you know, you get exposed to a virus, you develop symptoms to get rid of it. I mean, temperature is actually your body's way of getting rid of something that shouldn't be there. So in that sense, it, you can see that as a positive. So that side gets suppressed when the TH2 side is overactivated. And when the TH2 side is overactivated, also your antibody production increases. So you can start becoming sort of immunologically much much too reactive to certain things so you can start you know having more allergic reactions you might start reacting to foods uh, various different substances around you and your immune system is actually sort of working on an overdrive because ultimately really what you want your immune system to do is do nothing for most of the time you know we all live and breathe in an environment where there's challenges coming at our way all day long and if you start reacting to all of it, it makes your life very, very difficult. And obviously that this can explain some of the symptoms that people experience. Yeah. If their immune system is in one area being underactive, another area overactive, yeah. that would certainly explain a lot of what could be happening. Absolutely. And it's an interesting one, definitely, just from a practical point of view, often when I see patients and they say, you know what, I haven't had a cold for the past five years or so. But then when, you know, you can start questioning around that and often when you say, well, just think back, last time people around you had bad colds or flu viruses, how were you feeling? And often people tend to say, well actually, I just felt my ME symptoms got worse. So it's that underlying inflammation, which is the TH2 activation, it just gathered pace a little bit. But again, that kind of normal, healthy way of the immune system function on the TH1 side isn't quite there. So it's almost like they're, they're not reacting in, in that way, but they may be overreacting to foods. Yeah. So they're kind of the overactive and underactive at the same time. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. So how do we how do we test for this? So would be primarily symptoms, or what would be the what would be our way of finding yeah. out if this is going on for somebody? Well, it is mostly symptom led. Obviously, again, you've got to start looking at the areas that are very key to your immune function in the first place. So first of all, looking at your gut and your digestive function because about 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So in terms of direct testing, that is still quite difficult. But when you have start looking at the picture on the whole and if you, if you are having those seemingly unrelated immune responses, then you can start suspecting that there is an immune system imbalance at play. And then what you, start, what you want to start looking at is the various different ways that you can start building a really solid support around healthier functioning immune system 
So addressing the gut, making sure that your gut bacterial balance is really healthy, you're digesting well, your adrenal health is good because again that has a huge link to the immune system. Um, and generally then there are certain key nutrient supplements that can really boost and stimulate healthier immune function. So almost to support it so it can get back to then functioning how it should be functioning Absolutely. originally. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your time. So that's another kind of one, one of those um, examples where there's not obviously one answer for everyone. It's yeah. a case of finding out what's happening specifically for someone in their, their situation. Absolutely. But if people want to find out more, then obviously information packs and free from minute chats are a great way to explore this with one of the team at the clinic. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. And we look forward to speaking with you again soon.